This is the ad on Facebook here for the Yamaha 650 Turbo and uh, project bike complete, unmolested, missing right side exhaust, half left, but it's rusty, uh, starter, rebuilt starter, seized from sitting 15 years. And uh, I think it's got more there, let's see. Scroll down here. Have ownership in my name. So uh, there's the bike there. The body work looks in really good shape. But uh, there's the exhaust, so it's garbage. Uh, the seat's torn. The carb's got to be completely rebuilt. Top end of the engine's got to come off. Needs pipes. Probably if the tires are 15 years old, they're going to be uh, no good. They look in good shape, but probably enough to test drive it, but they probably got to be replaced. Like, got to put a bit of money into this. But pretty cool bike, pretty rare. It's nice that the bodywork is all in really nice shape. That's the main thing. And there's a lot of parts out there, surprisingly, for this bike. Yeah, there's how many kilometers are on it. And uh, he's cleaned it up since this picture. He's put air in the tire and he's cleaned it up because it's been sitting for quite a while. My uh, computer here somewhere, if I could figure out how to find him. Oh, yeah, some more pictures. Let me see. Yeah, he sent me some more pictures. You can see he's cleaned up the dash there. There's the bike there. It's a nice shape. It's the nicest one I've seen. And they're pretty, pretty rare around here. That bike's 41 years old, 42 years old. 1982, 41 years old, yeah. I think that'll be a fun project. Turbo's probably, the bearing in the turbo's probably seized. Might have to have it rebuilt. I might try to do it myself. We'll see. But uh, I'm going to go look at that bike tomorrow and uh, see if I can get a deal on it. It's the day after Easter Sunday. And uh, I'm going to sit down and relax. <laughs> And I didn't get the carbs back on the XJ900 yet. I went to look at the uh, um, XJ650 Turbo. And uh, it needed quite a bit more work than I thought. It needed a lot of the work, I thought. But there's a bunch, of, a lot of the panels had cracks in it. Like, you can't see it from the pictures. And that's a big job to repair all that. I offered him 800. He said no, and I said, well, I might go 1,000. He said no, and I said, okay, well, that's, so to, that determined that for me right there. <laughs> and then I'm gonna tape my sticks at the same time here. <laughs> I, had buy, I had to buy two sticks. I broke one last week in the tournament, and I broke one uh, last time I played, so I got two sticks here with, uh, 40% off, which is our steel. Really good deal. And, uh, anyways, I'm going to tape this stick. <clears throat> I'll give you lessons on taping the stick from what I was taught. If you're forward, you start taping from the heel uh, to the front of the stick, toe of the stick, heel, toe. And if you're a defenseman, you should tape from the uh, toe of the stick to the heel because you're skating backward a majority of the time. This used to be the old rule of thumb with the old great big tar thick heavy tape that would peel off. <clears throat> it always peel and there was a big ridge but this tape is so thin today I don't think it matters which way you tape it. <clears throat> back, that was back in the 60s and 70s. I'm kind of doing this my wrong way here, my wrong hand. <clears throat> Anyways that, uh, that 650 needed just too much work. It was sea solid. He did put I had a whole pile of questions for him. Did you soak it in the oil? What kind of oil? He put tranny fluid in it. I would have put some penetrating oil in it right away. Some light penetrating oil, not tranny fluid. And uh, he said he had the spark plugs out. Then I noticed he had uh, 
the clutch cover off. I said, did you take this off? Or the previous, he said, oh, I took it off. Because I think he was thinking that it wasn't seized. And then he, uh, this tape's all coming apart. So we took the clutch cover off and he just gooped it all back up with uh, orange ATV. And you don't need to do that with those covers. Um, I think it needs more work than he could handle. And uh, uh, something else he said, what else was he, he said? Uh, Oh yeah, the starter motor. I think it said that in the listing there, the starter motor, he had it rebuilt. So right away I'm thinking, he must have cranked it and cranked it with the engine being seized and uh, burnt the starter motor up. And uh, he said when he got it out, he said the starter motor turned over and everything, but it was slow. Yeah, that's probably because it got burnt out. <laughs> so he rebuilt that. And I think that cost him like near $100 for the rebuild kit. And he bought the bike at an auction. He bought the bike at an auction, so I don't know what he paid for it. And then what I do is this is a, just a candle, and uh, uh, like I say, the old tape used to be pretty sticky, so I'm not sure if this started with Doug Gilmore. But Doug Gilmore, this, I don't think they did this back in the '80s, but in the '90s, they started to. Uh, wax the sticks and it, it, it I think it serves two purposes it, it's going to really press that tape into the stick and uh, it makes the slide a little better on the ice it's like waxing at the bargain <laughs> that's that's my theory yeah. but it really I think it makes it I think it makes the tape last longer too because normally you got to retape your stick every three or four weeks probably for the amateurs <laughs> so waxing it up like that helps push the tape in really tight anyways there's one done. And I'll do the butt end. Everybody does their sticks differently. And I've been doing this since the 70s. I like to put a big knob on the back here. To give it a twist. Get a fine piece of it. Makes it a little better for gripping. So anyways, that guy with the 650, he texted me uh, the next day and said, uh, asked me if I was still interested in that bike. And uh, I didn't respond because I, I wasn't sure if, if it was a text on the day that I went there in a snowstorm or if it was a newer text. But then I see in his advertisement there, he dropped the price uh, to a thousand dollars. So now he's probably wishing uh, he would have took me up on my offer. But now I'm thinking it's worth $600. <laughs> 800 max. It, it, just, you're gonna spend at least three or 400 just fixing the exhaust. He says the turbo's good, or it turns over. Okay, there's one stick. And then <laughs> what I like to do is either I put a couple different colors of tape on here or put my name on it or number. Because every year one of my sticks goes missing. 
And then I got to track down who grabbed the wrong stick. So I put my name on here. One done. So yeah, the last week, I'd be too busy to work on that uh, XJ900 because uh, um, I had to fix our septic system here. Our, our house is on uh, septic and we got to, I rebuilt all this under the patio last summer. And, uh, and then the weeping bed went, uh, it actually went after I did this patio. Because when I cut the the uh, the pipe from the house that goes to the tanks, there was uh, about a quarter inch or half inch of uh, liquid in it. It should be dry. And uh, that, so that kind of worried me right there. And then by the fall time, it was filling up and not draining. So we kind of nursed it through the winter because uh, it backed up into the house a bit in the fall and it was getting too late to dig it all up so i we just kind of nursed it through the winter it, it was draining but really slow limited our water use and then uh, uh i just dug it all up it was clay tile from 1961 because i got the original building permit and uh it was just uh, one line to another tank buried in the ground over there only two feet by three feet three feet deep and then that tank um, was made of bricks not mortared and it's it just plugged plugged after all the years So Doug Gilmore <clears throat> played for Calgary Flames and Toronto Maple Leafs. He was the first one that I noticed that started waxing their, their sticks like this. But then what he would do, he'd wax them and then he had like a, a Ziploc bag full of baby powder and then he would uh, dip the stick in the baby powder. <laughs> So it, it make it just really silky, uh, slippery and soft. <laughs> he, has, he had soft hands, they would say. Soft passes. But it does help, it does help the tape last a little longer, for sure. I've never done the baby powder trick. <laughs> Anyways, that's how I do it. Everybody does it differently. That's kind of the unique thing about hockey. Everybody tapes their stick differently. It has their own preference. So the weeping bed is all fixed up. I've been worried about that since I bought this house almost eight years ago. Uh oh, there's a dog.
Rerun. I used to play in like three or four leagues and so you know guys grab your stick by mistake head home and then uh, can't remember who uh... And then I grab somebody else's stick because obviously they left an extra stick in the dressing room. So I always take that one home. And then I'm always trying to find the guy that got the wrong stick. And it'll often be the same model stick, but taped differently. <laughs> That's why I tape mine differently. I need a little bit more on the butt end of this one. Just to make it look thicker like the other one. Anyways, that's where I'm at. Next video, I'm gonna put the carbs on that XJ900 and balance them. And uh, uh, I think the tank's gonna be done this week because I called about it and hounded them a little bit. So I think that's coming. And uh, the windshield should be in uh, this, this week or next week too. So I think I can get that bike back together. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. Videos are pretty slow coming out right now. I've been, that, I'll show you the backyard. Right there. And back up here. A little bit more to go.